so care if they don't. Mike, in 10 games, you've started seven different combinations on the offensive line. How, how challenging is that to build chemistry, communication, when you have guys going in and out of the lineup like that? Well, that's part of it. Uh, we know that that's uh, it's part of this league. Uh, that's just kind of what happens throughout the course of the season. Uh, not to say that it's not challenging, uh, but, you know, we've, we've tried to get guys ready to go, tried to ask them to prepare as starters. Uh, even if you look at, you know, Calvin uh, coming from Carolina and just working hard to, to try to be ready to go uh, whenever his opportunity presents itself. And, you know, the other guys, uh, some of them have been here and, and, and waiting for their opportunity. So uh, that's kind of part of the deal. You have to prepare as a starter each and every week. Where's Duncan maybe made his biggest stride and, and where, what maybe is next for him? Um, well, I mean, I think we'll, you know, see where he uh, – you know, ends up at the end of the week, you know, he'll be working, you know, Dillard will be, I think, available to practice as he works his way through protocol. Uh, and so um, probably, you know, work Jalen and him over on the left side and work Dylan on the right side, um, you know, as we start the week off. For Duncan, what can he build on from, from Sunday? You know, Just the experience right? and, you know, going out and, and playing and, and working through you know, the, the, the calls, the silent cadence, the, you know, execution, the plays that he, um, you know, thought that he did a nice job on, the ones that he, you know, need to, needs to improve on, you know, just little things. There was a, you know, the screen where, unfortunately, Peter was downfield early. Uh, Jalen was on the backside and you know, felt like he blocked his guy. Uh, long enough, but then he ended up being a factor in the play and just explained it to Jalen that that's, you know, sometimes those are long developing plays and every block matters, you know, even though that you did, uh, you know, your job for the majority of the play, you know, it's a good lesson to, to, to learn uh, out there and, and, and seeing that guys finishing and being involved in the play and you can, you can help that. What's the reason? <clears throat> I mean, I think that just probably comfort level uh, for for Jalen and, and Dre and and Dylan, you know, just you know, being able to to work those combinations, and that's kind of how we'll start the week off, and you know, that may change. Impressions of Bryce Young so far. Oh, I think that the operation has been been good. The command of the the offense, and the, you see him change in protection on third down. Uh, quick release, the ability to scramble uh, doesn't look like it's it's too big for him. Um, does a nice job of, of scanning the field. It doesn't just lock in, you know, on one receiver. It can progress through, you know, even though Phelan's mostly open most of the time, and you know he has gone to him. But you know, it looks like the different concepts that they try to have up first different coverages. Uh, he's um, he's ready to go with. Well, it, it's great not to be able to travel, and we have one here, and we got to give our fans something to cheer about. That's, you know, they, we, we have to go and play in a manner in, in which they, they're they excited about and, and cheer and, and support us and help us on, you know, third down and the silent cadence and, and, and helping with momentum when we have those types of plays. Beyond just special teams, how's Colton Dow coming along in terms of knowledge of the offense and being ready to go to play? He's worked extremely hard. And, uh, you know, where those opportunities come at receiver, um, you know, I don't know, but I know that he's gained a lot of um, one confidence in himself and in respect of his teammates uh, for what he did on, uh, on Sunday just in the kicking game. And, uh, Blocking on the kickoff return, as we've talked about that, that's not an easy task. And he went back and set up and blocked a blocked a linebacker and was running down the field and you know, had good gunner releases. Now didn't have an opportunity to make a play, which again that's the most important thing. You know they were fair caught or kicked in the end zone, but uh, he he was he was playing with some speed, and so hopefully that can translate into to more confidence and more more impact in the kicking game, and then you know, take advantage of the opportunities when they come on offense. What kind of characteristics you usually face against a Frank Reich uh, coach team? 
Well, I think they've always been physical. They like to, uh, which the defense is, and, and you know, the ability to run the football, the ability to, to change pace on offense, the ability to, um, you know, take advantage of the coverage that you're in and try to match up with that, whether that's, you know, zone concepts, spacing, high-low concepts, or, or the ability to, to run man beaters. With Brian Burns, what is it that stands out to you that makes him such a good passer? Um, well, I think the speed and the length, uh, but also, you know, there's a burst and sometimes he plays at different speeds and kind of lulls you to sleep and knows that he starts faster than, than the offensive linemen do. And so there's times where, you know, he'll come in and kind of stop and, you know, they can see and kind of take a deep breath like, okay, he's done. And then all of a sudden he'll, he'll burst and did that a couple of times against Dallas. Um, you know, even on Sunday. So I think that's probably a, a something that he's probably picked up. He can he can go up and under. He can beat you inside in the middle of the pocket. Um, but then also, you know, if he feels like he's got it on the, on the edge to, to be able to bend. Wilt's completed 50% on first down and 70% on second down. Do you have any feel for why there might be such a discrepancy? I, I don't. Probably throw more on second down, um, based on those numbers. Um, when you when you pull those numbers, does that include uh, two minute, you know, things of those? Yeah. And so sometimes those numbers get skewed when you look at breakdowns of, you know, the two minute at the end of the half, um, two minute at the end of the game. You know, again, I, I'm I'm not sure. You know, I know that. Uh, maybe the, the, the pressure forced a, a throw away. You know, I know we had one the other day there with Hop and um, that there was some, some leakage and, and I don't think he felt like he could get it to Hop and so, you know, kind of dirted it to Derek. That's just an example. Again, I'm just trying to, you know, I think it's all a product of, uh, of everything in the entire offense. And, you know, looking and realizing that it's not all broken. There's some some really cool plays in there. There's really positive plays in there. And then just the, you know, what gets overshadowed, I think, even in our minds and everybody's mind is is the is the negative plays, the, the self-inflicted wounds, you know, the sacks on early downs that lead to, to longer yardages, uh, which are tough, um, you know, the, the snap or the false start or all those things. But then there's you know, there's there's plenty of good stuff in there as well. It just unfortunately gets overshadowed. So we'll have to throw it better on first down and, and maintain, you know, that same completion percentage and that same accuracy and that same uh, operation of, of protection, uh, route craft, and then accuracy to, to keep it at 70% on second down. You mentioned Monty Rice yesterday as somebody who's earned more of a role and taken advantage of his defensive snaps in your eyes. What's gone right for him over the course of a season to be able to do that? Well, I've just been, you know, and continuing to progress and they have good leadership. You know, Aziz has played a lot of football and, you know, whether that's Aziz or, or Gibby and, and, and Monty, you know, you can only play a certain amount of, of guys at one time. You know, so we're trying to balance all that. Uh, as well, I think. And so with Monty, you know, trying to factor in the kicking game and, and trying to you know, explain to him how critical that 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 is and, and how he can uh, and, and help us there. And then, you know, the opportunities that we've given him on defense, he's been able to, uh, you know, be around the football and, and show up. And, you know, again, not just in the run game. They had a nice play the other day on the, on the boot where, you know, he flipped and, and ran with, with Ingram and, and was able to force an incompletion. So Derek, after the game, could talk about how he needs to feel like he needs to do more, maybe run harder, do certain things. I mean, is he getting room to run when he gets the ball? Is that in there? Uh, well, you know, I mean, I agree with Derek. I think we all, and I love that, that attitude. I think the, the attitude that we all have to do a little bit more, uh, and even Derek, and we have to help him out. We One, we've got to help him out by being able to run more plays, right? We can't. We can't give him the ball ten times and have you know it'd be not that he couldn't have an impact, but there's a process to to being able to get him th those carries that then marinate and mature and you know have the ability to to bust a few and 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 
and break some tackles. And we know that there's going to be some, you know, hopefully not too many, some inefficient runs, but we know that over the course of 18 or 20 or 22 carries that hopefully, you know, that we get some of those uh, that pop. And so uh, there, there's, there's some room. And then sometimes there's not, you know, based on the front or based on, you know, the coverage or our inability, you know, to, to get, you know, the defender or somebody falls off. And, you know, so there's been times, you know, where we have and there's been times where where it hasn't. And so you know, when there isn't, you know, they've got to, you know, backs have to be able to, to put their pads down and, and and push for some some dirty yards and, or, you know, beat somebody on the edge like that guys those guys have done numerous times. Picking up on that, Mike, you said 18 <clears throat> or 20 or 22 carries. He's averaging – under 17 I know. right now. How much of a – like, is that a core issue for you guys? It, it, it's about the volume of plays. And if you – however many of those are third down that you take down out of there and however many are in you know, two-minute, you know, that you take out of there. So that number gets to be pretty small. And so we know that to get everybody involved, uh, the efficiency has to be there, the, the drives have to be there, and you know, I'm confident that it will. Um, because I believe that if we are able to do that, then Derek can impact the game and so can Hop and, you know, Tajay. You know, Tajay's, you know, first time he's gotten tackled by the first defender, I would say, uh, all year was on Sunday. And um, but we still like those chances. You know, we're out on the perimeter, and, but we just have to be able to run, you know, enough plays to get those guys involved. You mentioned the, the comfort level at the positions with the offensive line. Similar with, with maybe McCreary, um, you know, playing outside as opposed to playing inside as he has most of the year. Um, you know, Roger, you know, he comes to work, he goes inside, he plays outside, he'd play in the kicking game for us. He just, you know, I think he loves football. I think he will, will do anything that the team needs, and that's that's what he'll continue to do, I'm sure. You also mentioned, the, sorry, you also mentioned Thielen. Uh, how much of a safety valve is he for Bryce? Always open. I mean, he is uh, great route craft, good good feel in zone coverage, and you know, man coverage. He uses whether it's his own receiver or the defender to run his guy off of the route, and you know, just uh, a lot of really good instincts there for for getting open, and you know, rarely drops the football. Josh, why? Been top five in uh, the red zone so far this season. Why do you think that's an area where they've been so impactful? Uh, the Titans defense, right? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, I mean, I just, I think guys, you know, they, 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 you know, credit to the players, you know, for, for being able to, um, understand that you can't let them run it in and get a force the ball lateral. You know, we saw that a couple times, you know, creep in there when we haven't had success, right? Where it was, where it was Pittsburgh and they, they creased us in the middle. Um, understanding that not to, you know, all the details that we talk about in the red zone, not backing up and being on top and uh, trying to play square and, um, you know, trying not to let the quarterback scramble. So all the all the breakdowns that, that you see, we've all done those things really well when we're getting stops, like we did on first and second down. You know, they ran the one play with the quarterback, Reed and, you know, Arden and, you know, the corner played it really well and we stopped them and then they came back later in the game and ran the same thing and, you know, Roger got a little bit nosy in there and, you know, he got the edge. So it, it's, you know, just being able to execute those details and the stuff that we go over, uh, knowing the coverage concepts that we're in and, and executing them. Um, but that, that'll need to continue. For your corners, when, when you guys are in man, do, do they have the, like the green light? To come up and press or yeah, we'd like them to mix it up. Yeah, we'd like to mix it up. And again, be, being being uh, smart situationally, right, and being aware of uh, where you're at on the field, where you're at um, down and distance wise, situationally, whether it's you know end of half and they're in field goal range, you may want to protect you know the end zone as opposed to coming up and pressing you know, third and longer and, you know, different opportunities. And again, if you're going to, you're going to press, 
you know, we had to make sure that we're, we're impacting, you know, the route and not just giving them free access. And so that that's most important is that when you, you're going to go up and press that you're going to impact the release and, and, and force him, you know, to, to be uncomfortable and, and to disrupt the timing of, of the route. Would you like to give him more opportunities to press and get at the line and, you know, disrupt? I want uh, Christian to have whatever opportunities he has that's going to keep him, uh, his man from catching a football. And um, I can't say that whatever the numbers are, whether it's press or off, you know, I know that the, he's been able to execute both of those. And I know that there's been times where uh, guys have um, caught it uh, in press or off. So. I think being able to mix it up, you know, I just, I think that's important as well. I don't know that, you know, what one's statistically better than the other. Uh, and then, you know, there'll be some coverages, again, in man coverage, it, it is what it is. And you can't have everybody pressed, right? And making sure that we don't get picked. There are some opportunities there when guys are close together. So, um, you know, that's kind of where we're at there. But they mix it up to your satisfaction? No, he'll, uh, no, Traylon won't be there. I'm sorry? Did they mix it up to your satisfaction? No, no, we need to be better in, in all levels of our pass defense. And I'm hopeful that um, when I say all levels, I mean up front, that, that we get there a half step sooner and in the back end and, you know, that we're either hitting guys to, to hold, help the quarterback hold it a half a second longer. That's what I talk about impacting uh, the quarterback in the passing game and talk to the, to the players about that. It's not just one group. Like, there's times where we've had good coverage and forced them to hold on to the football. There's times where we've gotten there and, and have not, um, you know, forced them to hold the football. And so just realizing and showing where we can put those things together just a little bit better. And that hopefully will lead to, you know, ball disruption, whether it's a tip pass. Um, or, or a sack or a strip sack or, you know, or, or an interception because the quarterback's throwing it uh, too soon. Thank you. Yeah, I'm not really too close to them personally, um, but I mean, I've definitely watched him from afar and been really impressed with his whole process. And he's, he's a heck of a quarterback. It was really fun watching him, you know, comparing myself to the other quarterbacks in the draft class. Uh, and he did some great things on Saturdays. He's been doing some great things on Sundays. Um, and look, wish him the rest of his career. How much do you do that now that you're in a position to take advantage of some opportunities and you know, compare yourself to the other quarterbacks? In the yeah, I think it's, it's really important, especially like playing at this level, like seeing how other guys have gotten it done at this level. Uh, it's important, you know, looking at dudes that, you know, might have a similar skill set to you as to what you can do physically and um, just it's a copycat league, you know, just with, like with plays, just with same with technique, you know, just seeing other guys doing different things um, that can help your game. So that's been that's been fun. After four starts, what are some of the things that you've learned about the position in the NFL of playing quarterback that you had could had no way of knowing when you were, you know, just working in practice and watching film? I think just how fast things go during the game. I mean, we, we work with a with a play clock here uh, every day, practice to to emulate it, you know, and then just knowing that. Even though the, the time is winding down at the same speed, uh, it just seems like you know when you got the get out there on game day that there's a little less time. Uh, you got to make your decision a little faster. You got to be more decisive and more clear. Um, so just the processing of it all and on, on game day, knowing that it's a little sped up, but to have the still same confidence you do in practice to see it the way you do in practice and make the right decisions and get the guys rolling. You mentioned some of the, like, that you've watched other guys. Who are some of the guys that you have watched? Yeah, I think. Uh, it started with the pre-draft process. One guy I really liked watching was Joe um, Burrow. I think he does some great things. And just, I think, physically, we're, we're pretty similar. Dak's another one of those dudes, I think. Um, he does some good things with their offense. And uh, you know, even just watching just their past game they had against Carolina and what he, what he was able to do and how he operates. Um, there's, a, there's a couple that I'd say at the top of my head. How much are you looking forward to playing at home? It's been a while for you guys. Oh, it's great. I mean, we. Undefeated at home, so I mean we gotta keep it rolling, you know. So I mean it's it's gonna be awesome to have the fans back there, um, and to get back home. It's been what five five six weeks since, since we've been there, so um, 
it's going to be great. This feels better at home for sure. Only a couple deep throws for you in the last game. Was that uh, and great success on too? But was that more by design, or, or did you just maybe not have time to throw? I mean, it's, we, we ran 36 plays. Like, you gotta have more opportunities to run more plays, to give the ball to Derek more, to give the ball to Tajay more, to throw the ball down the field more, to open up those things. But when you truly only have seven opportunities to um, put drives together, uh, you, you realize just how important. Like we talked about, um, you know. At, at nausea, is just the little things. You're hitting uh, 50 percent on first down, completion percentage 70 percent on second down. Were you aware of that discrepancy? You have any feel for for why it's there? No, no. I, I, at the top of my head, I couldn't point to anything specifically. No. Um, oh, no, it's fine. No, it's fine. I had nothing else to say. Are you putting any extra work with Aaron Brewer, just with just the snaps and since last game kind of went? Yeah, I mean, um, his misses, uh, if we go back and just self-scout, his misses have all been kind of in that same spot, and he's aware of that, and we're aware of that as no, er, as well. And we're going to make some adjustments just with how we practice and um, and how we play just to, to help us out with that, just to make sure that that exchange, which is what's the start of every play, is if we don't get that clean, then nothing else can, can work. So got to make sure that that's clean every time. What's the challenge of having that internal clock in your head versus going through your progressions and knowing you have to get the ball out? Yeah, I mean, it's there's the feel of you know the rush, but then there's the feel of the back end, and you know compartmentalizing the two and understanding how one um, could potentially affect you, um, but not letting the other one affect you at the same time, you know. Um, but it's just a feel thing. It's just with reps knowing how when you get pushed off your spot, how your eyes can't necessarily go to that next read, how you have to move to this side of the field to find whatever route's coming to you. That's just you know knowing the playbook, knowing the scheme. Um, knowing where your guys are going to be at at certain times, and then if you have an understanding of what's happening in the back end, where those holes are supposed to be, and then reacting to that. How much more of a feel have you gotten over the last month? I, I think, I mean, I've definitely improved. I think just in terms of coverage recognition and just not just guessing and having a good idea of what I'm seeing out there. Um, I've, uh, I think I've done a decent job of that. I've just got to keep pushing and keep, get better. How is that? It's been great. I mean, they, they, they get us ready each and every week with all the looks that we could potentially expect. And then obviously telling us that, you know, we're going to get some looks that we don't expect. I mean, you can, you can go back to last week to talk about their technique in the secondary and how we expected them to be handling all these, you know, deep three level cross or concepts that we that we work a lot. Um, and we didn't get the responses that we, uh, you know, we had, we had uh, expected. So it's that much more important that we're able to make those in-game adjustments and that these receivers and everybody else knows their rules and what we might be expecting, but how we have to just turn on a dime and, and just react to what actually happens opposed to what we're expecting. How do you think you've done with that stuff, the unexpected stuff? Sorry? How do you think you've done with that unexpected stuff? Good, good. I mean, I, I, even with last week, like just the that second uh, deep shot that we were able to take, like, the guys were in the spots that we were expecting them to be, and because of that, we were able to make a play. So just guys continuing to do that. Obviously, it's not perfect, um, and just with technique and how we're how we're teaching them to, to do these things, it's it's important to again compartmentalize like what we're teaching, what we're expecting, but what needs to be done to get the point of the play through. In terms of that, as the the, the rate that people are blitzing you, has that been about what you've expected, or has it been a little more than? When yeah, guys. yeah. I think we go back to you know that second game um, that I played. Just seeing a little more pressure and teams kind of realizing you know that, that that they were able to get to us a little bit, and then we've seen a little uptick in that. And just the pressure percentage. Um, these teams, they they are what they are at their core. Um, but if they do see things like that, then they might change their tendencies, which we've been able to um, get ahead of and at least uh, prepare for, which has been nice. But uh, we've done a good job of having the right answers in protection and especially in third down with just ways that we're able to handle and just take as much pressure off the quarterback position. How closely did you get to know Carolina's staff in the pre-draft? Pretty close. Yeah, I mean, I had a dinner with them, and then I had a top 30 visit with them and uh, just had, had a decent connection with them. I know that they uh, did the same process with uh, the uh, three, three or four quarterbacks or whatever, whoever they, they brought in, um, but they were very professional about all of them. and. Uh, you know, I, I thought that they were a well well run organization. Is there a point where you thought you might be the pick there? Just kind of how do you think about this week? <laughs> Not really. No, I think uh, I went I went out there for my top thirty, and uh, 
not that they said it in words, but essentially the vibe was, hey, like, thanks for coming, but, <laughs> no, no. but and, then, and then I think it was like two, two days later, like the reports come out, like, Will Levis reportedly supposed to be number one pick to Carolina. I, I, I really wanted to just stand up on top and be like, they actually told me the opposite. <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, all, all respect to Coach Reich and, and all of them. They, they handled that process with, you know, the, all the integrity and all the right ways that they should have. Um, and uh, looking forward to competing against them. Be motivated, by, be motivated by all by teams that maybe didn't pick you. I know a lot of times the guys get motivated by this team didn't pick me, this team didn't pick me. There were some quarterbacks picked ahead of you. Does that serve as motivation, or you just kind of go about doing? Yeah, I don't think I don't think I'm looking at a specific team like dang, like screw these guys. Like I'm really trying to beat up on them, you know. But no, it's just internal motivation, just as a whole, um, just how that whole process went for me that was able to just push me forward and just work the way I have like since I got here. Yeah, he's he's a beast. I mean, he's we talk about him. Um, we we you don't necessarily know know what he's going to do technique what technique wise from his different positions. So just being you know um, locked into he might be here, but you might expect him to be doing this where he might be coming underneath. And and he's definitely a guy we got to lock in on. And I think overall defensively, we're going to be getting some looks that we haven't gotten in a long time um, from a front perspective, uh, which is nice that we were able to get ahead of it, knowing that we are, we were going to be facing these types of teams. So a lot of um, stuff that we'd already worked in training camp that we haven't necessarily been able to come back to that we now just kind of got to refresh our memory with and, uh, and get the guys tuned up on. So opportunities to do a lot of good things against them. Uh, got to handle their guys, Burns especially, uh, being one of them. Mate, I a lot of quick conversations post-game. Anybody say anything with Baker or Trevor, anybody you talk to, giving you advice kind of going off uh, about how things have gone? So uh, I think the quarterback-wise has just been really quick um, in and out uh, with them. But I've had good, good conversations with uh, dudes that I've played with on, on other teams in college that uh, obviously they're going to tell me what I want to hear, being their friend, telling me that I'm doing a good job. But it, it's cool hearing just other guys, other professionals, you know, giving you some affirmation about how you play or whatever. Not, not that that means anything because it all just comes from within and the guys in here. Um, but it's just cool seeing the, the dudes that you're able to come up with through college to go and chase their same dreams and then laugh with each other afterwards.